Welcome. I'm Jerry Oginski, a medical malpractice and personal injury trial lawyer practicing law here in the state of New York. Thank you for joining me. Today's topic is going to be slip and falls on snow or ice. Can you get money for your injuries? The short answer is possibly. The longer answer is it depends. And why do I say that? It depends on a number of factors. One of the things that an attorney needs to know when you slip and fall on snow or ice are, what is it that you slipped on? Was it ice? Was it snow? It's very important that, to, to know the distinction. The reason is we need to be able to show what it was you fell on, and we need to know how long the condition existed. Let's say it's in the middle of a blizzard, and the snow is pouring down, and you're walking through a parking lot, and it's been snowing for the last two hours, and the conditions are treacherous but there's been no time for any snowplow or anyone to come and snowplow the driveway or the parking lot that you're walking through. Well, how then is the owner of the property going to know that the condition is hazardous or that they didn't clean up the, w the way that they were supposed to? Or say you're walking down the sidewalk in front of someone's home and they are obligated to snow uh, and shovel all the snow in front of their walk and to put salt or sand down in order to create friction so that people do not uh, slip and fall. Well, that's important for us to know when the sidewalk was shoveled, when it was cleared away, because there are instances where snow will continue to fall or where it gets warmer, where you have a melting situation and then it, at night it freezes up again. And the owner of the property may not have sufficient time to come back in the middle of the night or in the morning and clean away that area. So in the next morning when people are on their way to work, they may walk by that area, which is slippery, and fall. The problem is being able to prove notice. How long did the condition exist that the owner of the property should have known about and taken steps to clear it away? Or maybe somebody actually did clear the snow and ice away, but through a period of days and nights of melting and refreezing, the condition existed again and nobody bothered to tell the owner of the property that this condition was there. They thought everything was cleared away and there was nothing there. Oftentimes we'll see cases where someone is in a parking lot getting out of their car and uh, it had snowed a few days ago and in the, the, where they parked might be on a hill. And the problem is that when they snow plowed, the snow plow might have plowed all that excess snow up at the top of a hill. And what do you think happens when it gets warmer during the middle of the day and the sun is beating down on the snow? You'll have a runoff. Melt. Snow will melt and you'll have a water runoff. But what happens at night? It freezes again. And when that stuff freezes, sometimes it forms a layer of thin, clear ice. We sometimes call it black ice because you can't actually see it until you're on top of it or slip on it. And the next morning when somebody goes to their car to go to work or go run some errands, they don't realize it's there. They fall and get injured. And the questions that an attorney always needs to know is, what were you wearing? What type of weather was it? Was it snowing out still? Was it clear? Had it snowed the day before? What were the temperature like? And an attorney will often get the weather charts for that day and for the entire week before because we will want to know what the temperature gradient was during the day and at night in order to determine whether there was a refreezing of the condition that you were involved in. And typically in these injury, in these slip and fall cases uh, involving snow or ice, the injuries are very significant. You have people fracturing legs and arms when they fall, hips, and they get taken to the hospitals and some of them need surgery to correct their problem. And these injuries are very disabling. But the real question is, how exactly did the incident happen? Did anybody know about it? Did anyone tell the owner of the property, anyone see what happened? Those are crucial, crucial facts that you need to know about before knowing whether or not you have a valid case. That's it for today. I'm Jerry Oginski. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day.